Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rumor Brothers to fit some front disc and pads on this 2001 Land Rover Defender TD5. First thing as always on these jobs, get it jacked up and take the wheels off. We're lucky enough to have a ramp so we can work at a reasonable level, but if you haven't, jack it up and put an axle stand on to make it nice and safe before you start the job. I've got the wheel off and I've just come to remove the brake pads and I can see all four pistons are fairly well corroded so we are going to actually fit a new caliper so once we've done the disc and pads we will replace a new caliper and I'll show you them pistons once I've got the pads out I'll show you them so you can see them a bit clearer. To remove the brake pads they should have an R clip on each end of the brake pins I mean somebody's put split pins in this particular one but they will have R clips when we put them back together so it's just a case of removing the split pin of the R clip removing the pin just keeping hold of the spring um, when you take it to bits both pins out and then you can pull out the brake pads. To remove the brake caliper, fairly simple. Firstly, I'm going to clamp off the brake hose to stop the fluid coming out. An 11mm spanner on the brake pipe either goes into the caliper. Now, if this has already had a copper brake pipe fitted out, the chances are it won't come undone, so you will have to have a new copper brake pipe made up. So once that one's undone, this is still steel, so it has come undone okay. So we'll work that backwards and forwards, take the brake pipe end off, and then also there's a bracket that holds the flexor to the top of the stub, 17mm socket, take the, take the nut out there, and then we can move the brake pipe out of the way. And then there's two bolts on the back of the brake caliper. They have got the double hex uh, nut uh, heads on, on, the, on the, both the bolts there, which so you do need to use a good quality socket on those because they do get tight and they do corrode quite a lot as well. So I would advise when you put the new caliper on, you fit two new bolts as well. As you can see, the pistons now, you can see them a bit more clearly and they, they, they're very, very corroded, so it's definitely worth putting their new calipers on, um, especially the price of them from Rimmer Brothers. This is one of the bolts that holds the brake caliper on, you can see it's not your conventional sort of nut head, it's the, the double hex one, so, and say they do corrode quite badly, so they are, and they do get really, really tight, so I would definitely put new ones in. It's now time to remove the disc, so first we're going to remove the drive flange, so just to get a screwdriver and prise the rubber cap off the front, then we'll take the third clip off the drive shaft, just be careful not to drop the washer after it as well, so get that off, take the shims off, and then we'll take the four, five, seventeen mil bolts out, and then hopefully we'll just be able to pull the drive flange off the drive shaft. If you haven't got a windy gun to undo all these five bolts, if you just put a bar against the wheel stud and the hub, and then you'll be able to put your socket onto them, hold the bar, crack all five of them off, and then you'll be able to take them out with your fingers. With the circuit off the drive shaft and the five bolts out, you can then slide the drive flange off the drive shaft. Now sometimes these do get really, really tight and seize onto the spine, so we have had times where we've had to cut them off. Um, but now, once that's out of the way, we can see the tab washer and the, and the, the outer nut that releases the wheel bearing so we can take the hub and the disc off. The outer lock nut is held up with a tab washer, so you need to get a, a punch and just bend back the tab washer so it's off the nut. Then you get a 52mm socket on the nut, undo the nut and take that one off and the tab washer, and then we'll see the inner nut that holds the wheel bearing in. Once the outer lock nut's off, you can see the tab washer there. So if you just get a couple of screwdrivers and just gently prise it forward like that, and then you'll be able to see there's a flat on the on the tab washer and a flat on the hub as well. So obviously when you're putting it back together, the flat needs to go onto the flat. So then you, when you bend the tab washer up to lock the outer nut, it's got something to hold onto so it doesn't spin. So now you can see I've got inner nut nearly off. I'll just take that off, place it to one side, and then we can just slide the whole hub, disc, and bearing assembly off. There we are there, and we'll show you all a little bit better when we're in a better position. We can pull the bearing and the bearing spacer out of the hub. Now, we're, once we've cleaned all the grease off, we'll be able to inspect the bearing for corrosion or damage, and there's also the surface that the bearing runs on in there. We need now to separate the disc from the hub. There's five um, bolts that hold the, the disc onto the hub, and they are the similar sort of head to the, to the caliper bar, so they're a multi-hex one. These are a 14 mil, not a 13. Now, we've got a windy gun, so we can just zip them out nice and easily. But if you haven't got a windy gun, you'll have to use a bar in the wheel nuts of the hub as we did before, and just it maybe needs a bit of assistance just to get somebody to hold that while you undo the bolts. 
Now we need to separate the disc from the from the hub. Not too difficult a job. I mean, if you have a press, it'd be nice to hold the disc in the press and press down the centre. Just cover up the bearing so no muck gets into the bearing surface. If you haven't got a press, then if you just hold the disc and tap the hub with a copper mallet, then the hub will just eventually break away from the disc and then we can fit the new one. Here's the new disc, so we'll place it on top of the hub, align up the holes, replace our five bolts, and these want to be torqued down to 73 newton meters. It's now a case of replacing the hub and disc assembly back onto the stub. Just be careful not to damage the seal or anything, just put it on nice and straight. Now we've got the the, the latest type nut which replaces the, the lock nuts and the tab washer with a normal washer with your flat on still, so it needs to still go in the the same place on the flat on the stub axle. And then the new type nut's got a, a built-in lock washer on the side of it. So when you tighten it down, you then just have to, with a little uh, punch, just tap the outside of the shroud onto the flat of the uh, of the of the hub. So that's the lock mechanism. With the hub now on, the new washer on, the new nut, that one's tightened up to 210 newton meters, and then just tap the tab over onto the flat as a locking mechanism, then we can replace the drive flange. I just thought it might be worth mentioning, these are taper roller bearings on the wheel bearing on this, uh, on this Land Rover, um, and normally you do leave a little bit of play in taper roller bearings, but because this has got the sleeve in between, in between the two bearings in the center, with a predetermined um, tension on it, that's why you tighten this nut up to 210 newton meters. Otherwise, if it was normal ones, you would leave a slight bit of play and then tighten the lock nut up. You can re put the new gasket onto the drive flange, line it up with the holes, you just pop a bolt in there, it holds it in place just while you're fitting it on, then slide it over the splines, line it up, put all your fixing bolts back in, you might just want to put a, uh, a bolt in the end of the drive shaft so you can pull the drive shaft out then you can put your shims and circle it back on that. Before we fit the uh, brake caliper just let's clean up the, the brake disc with brake cleaner. It wants to be clean both sides, make sure all the mork or residue is off the disc before we fit the pads so that'll be nice and clean. We'll do it both sides as well, do the rear and then we can fit the brake caliper. I'm now going to fit the new brake caliper. We've got the new bolts pre loctited So just a case of putting the caliper in line and fitting your bolts. And these caliper bolts want to torque down to 82 newton meters. I'm now going to replace the brake pipe. So just be careful, make sure you don't cross thread it. So get that started. And we can just put the, the clamp back on the top of the, the tractor joint there. It's just worth mentioning as well, once the brake pipe is all on and everything's tightened up, I just spin it from lock to lock because the brake pipe does get really close to the bottom of the spring hanger. So you just want to make sure that it hasn't got bent in any way and it's going to catch that. Or if you've replaced it with a new copper brake pipe, that it's not going to catch that the way you've bent it. So just say lock to lock and just make sure it clears, everything doesn't fail. With the brake pipe all in place, I can release my brake pipe clamp. That's one side. Now we're going to bleed the brakes. I mean, the, there are several ways. Now, Rimmer Brothers do sell a nice easy bleed kit, which is inexpensive. It's great to use. Really, really simple. You just you fill the bottle with brake fluid. You put it on top of the reservoir. Then you get a spare tire. Inflate it to 20 psi, and then connect the black hose onto the valve. It pressurizes the system. And all you need to do is put a pipe onto the bleed nipple, crack off the bleed nipple, and then watch the fluid come out when the air's stopped coming out and it's just solid fluid, tighten up the bleed nipple and that's the job done. If you haven't got an easy bleed or pressurised brake system uh, bleeder, what you can do is if you crack off the bleed nipple and put a pipe, try and use a clear pipe onto the end of the bleed nipple into a tub that's just got a little bit of brake fluid in the bottom and then you can jump in the car and as you press your brake on and off what it'll do is it'll push the fluid out but it won't suck any air back in. So if you do that until all the air has gone out of your clear tube and all you can see is fluid then you can crack the, you tighten up the bleed nipple and it's all be done okay. Now if you've got an assistant that can help you, another system is that you can just get the pipe or even you don't even need the pipe, you can just get them to every time they put the foot down on the pedal then put your finger on the end of the bleed nipple or on the end of your pipe and then they let the foot off the brake pedal and then you release your finger and then that's, they go down on the brake pedal then the fluid comes out you put your finger back on the end and stop the air getting drawn back into the caliper. And if you keep doing that until there's no air in the system, 
tighten it up and then we're done. So that's this side, front discs, caliper and pads all done and fitted, the brakes are bled, all we've got to do now is replace the wheel. So we'll put the wheel on and tighten them down, 100 newton metres if it's steel wheels, 130 newton metres if it's got alloy wheels, or 170 newton metres if it's got heavy duty wheels on. And then that's it. this side is all done, we'll go around to the other side and do exactly the same there.